Nothing screams Halloween like pumpkins and jump scares, and Overwatch is no exception to the October festivities with spooky themed skins and maps, but did you know that on top of the official PvE modes, there are also a ton of community made custom modes that are perfect for the scary season. I went through and tested a ton of spooky modes live on Twitch to bring you my 5 favourite modes that you should play to get in the Halloween spirit. Starting off with my favourite solo mode. This is Trick or Treat Simulator, a story and objective based mode played in Eichenwald. You play the part of a young trick or treater hoping to collect a load of candy on Halloween and are sent out to knock on as many doors as you can find. Each door hides a new and unique character, and while some will hand you some candy to allow you to progress to the next area, others will ask you to complete a task such as finding hidden objects for bonus candy or interacting with their neighbours before handing anything over. I found the balance of interactive tasks and funny characters to be great as it never felt repetitive even later on in my playthrough. The mode is playable solo or with up to 4 players, but all tasks remain individual to allow you to experience the full selection of characters Eichenwald has to offer before heading to the main castle for an explosive ending. One thing I discovered along the way with my Twitch viewers is that one of the wagon wheels in the third area can be destroyed accidentally, meaning it will be completely invisible for when you need to find it. If this happens to you, try punching here to complete the challenge, but each area is unlockable without completing all of the challenges, allowing you to progress even if you get stuck on this or something else. The next mode is my go-to PvE mode for Halloween. This is Glitch in the System, a horror PvE game mode where you and up to 3 friends are trapped in a foggy Hollywood set. All you have to do to escape is find 10 purple orbs and run to the exit within the time limit, but there's a catch. Sombra does not want you to escape, and has hidden the purple orbs extremely well with up to 150 different locations, including inside pumpkins. As you collect orbs, Sombra will send out glitchy bots to prevent you from finding more, and they will chase you down wherever you go. Do not let the bots hack all of the team, or it's game over. The game gets increasingly terrifying as you collect more orbs, as hallucinations and jump scares will become more frequent, so make sure to invite those friends who are easily scared for an extra laugh. When I played with my Twitch viewers, we found that picking heroes with movement abilities on short cooldowns, such as D.Va or Echo, helped to escape the bots and give a more aerial view of potential hiding spots. We also found that you can escape being hacked by running in the tavern, just don't do it all at once. Next up we have my favourite PvP modes. This is Pumpkin Blast, a free-for-all mode where players must find and shoot pumpkins hidden around Eichenwald. Each shot pumpkin will grant you a random amount of coloured candy, take this candy to the attacker spawn to transform them into crystals, with the player having the most crystals at the end of the time limit, winning the round. But there's a catch. As you shoot pumpkins, your noise level will grow. Shoot too many of them, and you will wake up the Reaper, who will chase you down and steal some of your candy. The Reaper can be killed, although you will need two well-placed headshots or four body shots to take him out. When playing with my Twitch viewers, we figured out that the Reaper would spawn at your last shot pumpkin, which allowed for some hilarious Reaper deaths if you shot pumpkins near the bridge. Pumpkins will regenerate when 10 or less are still available, so keep an eye out for those greedy friends who will be ready to steal them when you are in the spawn. There is a candy trade system in place, but as there are no candy purchasable items, this is an unused feature, so don't get caught out like me when heading in for your crystals. As this mode is less focused on mechanical skill, it really is a fun time for all skill levels, so make sure to include your bronze friends in this one. If you're looking for something a little bit more skillful, then this next one will be perfect. This is Zombie Attack, a free-for-all survival mode where you can either work as a team or betray your fellow survivors to win. Your main objective as a survivor is to be the last player standing, with points awarded to survivors each time other players are infected by enemy reapers. You can shoot the infected players to force them to respawn, or use one of the unique hero abilities to either escape or sabotage other survivors. Get to 40 points and you win the match. Escaping the Reapers won't be easy though, as they have no cooldown on their teleport 
and each infected survivor will become an additional Reaper to avoid. The 13 available survivor heroes each come with new custom abilities, with my favourites being Widowmaker's Venom Mine that maxes out your look sensitivity, Zarya's Projected Barrier that can teleport anyone away, and Sigma who gets an insanely slow rock that instantly infects any survivors it touches. When I played with my Twitch viewers, we found that Sombra should be disabled due to her new passive ability making her completely invisible to infected players, and that you can manually add in more maps for more variety in your matches. The game mode does come with some bonus modes, including minigames, fog for an even more spooky experience, and hide and seek. Make sure to invite your friends for this one as it is a great laugh. If you are more team orientated, then this next one might be more for you. This is Five Nights at King's Row, a horror PvP mode based on the game Five Nights at Freddy's. In this mode, the King's Row Night Guards must fend off the incoming animatronics and survive until sunrise to win, whereas the animatronics must kill all the night guards using their special abilities. Before the animatronics can attack the night guards, however, they must build their attack power by standing in line of sight of security cameras. Once enough power has been generated, they can approach the night guards' doors and attack after a short delay. Night guards can use their security cameras to keep track of and drain animatronics' attack power, or use lights and doors to defend themselves, but this comes at the cost of consuming power, which has a limited supply. There are 14 playable animatronics to watch out for, each with their own unique abilities, with my favourites being Gramatra who can teleport into the sewers, Mercy who can use vents to fast travel to different areas, and Zenyatta who comes with a jump scare attack. The mode is designed to be played with a 1 night guard to 4 animatronic ratio, so make sure you join the Discord server if you are lacking some extra friends to play with. And that wraps up my top 5 spooky modes to play this Halloween. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see a festive version for December, and make sure to follow me on Twitch to catch all the content live.